Hello and greetings. We'll get started here in about five minutes. I wanted to go ahead and um, get started a little early. And uh, see, we were joined here with uh, Laura Brandenburg. Um, so, hey, Laura, we're actually on live right now as people are rolling in a little early. Um, yep. Hi, so, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'll do <laughs> is I'll put a few things in the chat. Um, as far as some links that will probably come up today. And um, so I wanted you to have a chance uh, if you're joining us live here today, or even if you're watching on replay, uh, Laura and I are gonna be talking about several different resources and things. And uh, we're still about five, four or five minutes early. Uh, we've had several hundred people register, so we're hoping for a good turnout. And so we'll do a little bit of housekeeping here um while we wait and uh so one thing you can do is you can share with us in the in the chat let me put the links in the chat i just um there we go so you should see the links in the chat there and then uh, um oh if you have any questions just to get everyone oriented on kind of some housekeeping items as we get started here if you have any questions just put those in the q a section uh, that's a button that says Q&A. Uh, the chat is kind of hard to keep up with when there's a lot of people online like this, and I'll be monitoring that, and we'll be discussing uh, Salesforce business analyst careers. So you can go ahead and get your questions in now if you'd like. We've had several uh, that were sent in earlier, so we're prepared to speak to that as well. And uh, so anyway, um, let's see, what else? So how are you doing today, Laura? We'll go ahead and uh, just start a little bit early and that way people jump in. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to your audience. Yes, yeah. I'm so <laughs> excited. We had a discussion about a year and a half ago. It's been about 18 months and uh, a lot has changed on the Salesforce side over those past 18 months. So I felt like it was good to the took of the sales careers. And I think, Another thing that I've noticed that has happened over the past 18 months since last we spoke is that there's been a lot more people that have passed the Salesforce Administrator Certification. And with that comes a concern of kind of some saturation in this field. And so uh, I feel like it's important for people to understand as well that there's other career paths other than just Salesforce Administrator. Mm -hmm. And one of those career paths is Business Analyst. So we're gonna be diving into that today because I see a lot of students that are just starting out and they have this goal in mind, which is great of passing the certification for Salesforce administrator. And then they hit the big now what? And so right. I think that uh, today is gonna be a, a good chance to uh, dive into that. So let's go ahead, let me introduce you officially, Laura, and uh, then we'll start diving in uh, to your discussion and how this we've got some information on Salesforce business analyst careers and we'll save some time at the end for questions as well. Go ahead and get those in and while Laura's talking, I'm gonna be reading the questions. I may answer some via text in the QA section and some we may answer live. So with that, this is Laura Brandenburg. Uh, she is an expert with business analyst careers, has written books on the topic and has been in the space for well over a decade. Uh, the founder of Bridging the Gap. And uh, so I always look to her for any uh, expertise related to business analyst careers. And so Laura, I'll uh, I thank you once again for joining us and I'm excited to see what you have to share with us today. Yeah, I'm excited too. And I would definitely want to echo your idea of, you know, getting questions in. I pre prepared a few quick slides to kind of to kind to kind of ground us and share some of the things that I thought were important, but we really wanted to leave a lot of time for for questions today and to make sure we met your challenges as well. So I just want to make sure I went ahead and shared my screen. Mike, are you seeing that up and live? Yes, I am. All right, title yes. slide. Good. That's always good to know. We're right at the top of the hour, so how perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome. So as Mike mentioned, we're here to talk about how to successfully launch your Salesforce business analyst career. Mike is an expert on Salesforce on an all things admin certification and all of that. Um, I bring more of the business anal analysis career piece to it. So I think together we've got a lot to share with you about how these two intersect. 
Um, but I will say through my company, most of the people that we train and help get started in business analysis careers have some kind of expertise, right? Whether it's Salesforce, which is a huge opportunity right now, or an industry expertise or another technology like ServiceNow or Microsoft tool sets or things like that. Like there's usually something that like makes their approach to the role unique, um, though we have this shared understanding of, of business analysis that we can bring to all of those kinds of projects. So with that, I just really wanted to share like, to so start out by like, what is business analysis, right? So there's actually a lot of confusion in the marketplace around what a business analyst is. And part of that is because the job descriptions are all over the map. Part of that is because many hiring managers don't actually understand what a great business analyst is or what an ideal role for the business analyst is. And part of it is like that title just gets slapped around and used in a lot of different ways. Uh, and so this is the definition from the business analysis body of knowledge. It's sort of the, the Bible of the profession written by the International Institute of Business Analysis. That's a lot of vocabulary, but basically a professional association specifically for business analysts. And they define it as the practice of enabling change in an enterprise by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. So change is really any kind of project, right? Anytime there's a problem in your organization and you wanna create change, implement something new to, to change your business, change your software, change the environment uh, so that you are creating ROI, creating a, a positive outcome in your organization. And we do that by defining needs. So what are the actual business problems that need to be solved, right? Like why are we implementing this salesforce.com implementation? Or why are we migrating this new business unit over to Salesforce? Or why do we need this new report, right? All great questions to be asking. So often we wanna dive right into that solution without asking why. Um, and the solution is a big piece of it too. So in the case of, you know, a Salesforce BA role, Salesforce.com is going to be a big part of that solution where you're looking at, you know, what are the customizations? How are we going to implement it? How will we migrate data? What are the reports we need? How will our business process run? That's like, that's all part of the solution. It's not just a software solution. IABA actually has a very comprehensive view of solution. And then ultimately it's about delivering value to stakeholders. So making a positive change to our business community. All right. And I really do think the opportunities in this space, both for people with the Salesforce expertise and a business analyst skill set, are really significant. Matt, Mike and I were chatting kind of before this about the salary opportunities specifically about you know, how an admin salary, I think you said, was in the 90,000 range. And when you get to a Salesforce BA role, it's above 100,000 typically, right? Right, yeah, that's correct. And uh, Salesforce's own Trailhead website has that. The link in the chat for everyone. Yeah. So if you, got, if you need to scroll up towards the beginning of the chat, uh, that has the link in its uh, link that says something about Trailhead uh, business analyst careers so that average salary for Salesforce business analysts is reported at 104000 That's up from an average salary of 95000 for Salesforce administrators. And so you see that uh, that combined uh, skill set is brings the additional value. You bring value and then you uh, get value yeah. back through an increased salary. Yeah. And the average salary, usually when I see salary surveys in the BA space, not exclusive to Salesforce, is usually in that somewhere in the 90,000s um, for like a mid-career professional. And then somebody at a more senior level, those also cross that $100,000 mark. So it is a, the business analysis skill set itself is valuable. And then you combine them together. I think it's just such an in-demand area. There's so many companies implementing this tool that when you bring the, the business expertise and like, how are we going to actually deliver this tool in a way that solves a business problem, meets a business need, has a positive ROI, um, you can really start to create a lot of potential there. Um, so I also think it's kind of often a, an increased stature in the organization too. So if you feel kind of stuck in an, an admin role, like, oh my gosh, every day, like it's the same problem, right? Like I have to deal with the same problem. Business analysis, 
business analysts solve problems, right? You are actually getting on the front end of some of that so that you're ahead of that and actually looking at what are the systemic problems in our organization? What's not working with our Salesforce implementation? How can we be you know, doing the next level things as an organization to really use what we've invested in in Salesforce and make sure that it's delivering value for our organization? So what are some of the responsibilities of a BA? I know we wanted to make sure like, you know, there's so much variety and confusion in the profession to talk about like, what might you actually be doing? Uh, when I, there's many ways that the title is used, but the way that we focus on helping people at Bridging the Gap is typically as somebody who's on uh, a software project. So there's some sort of project that you're working on in a business analysis role. Now, as you get higher up in BA work, like often you start to move beyond the project into more strategic work as well. And a lot of the skill sets we're going to talk about can open up those opportunities for you long term. But what we're going to talk about today is really within the context of a project where you would be part of defining that project objective and scope. So this is like, what are the needs? What's the problem that we're solving here? Why are we doing this? And one of the ways that we start to figure out the problem and define the scope is by analyzing the business process. So I hear a lot, especially from people who are implementing commercial off the shelf tools like Salesforce or some of the other examples from our course participants, like they just wanna know how to set up the screen, right? Or they just wanna know what this report needs to look like or what, how we need to configure this. But really those decisions are very hard to make if you don't understand how a business user is going to actually um, be using that, what their big picture process is like. And so analyzing the business process before you start getting into those software configurations is a really important piece. Um, and then of course, defining what do those configuration looks look like? Like how might we need to customize this tool or how do we need to configure this tool? Uh, and sometimes I think if you're also part implementation, you might be actually doing that in the real world environment. Other times you might be handing off like wireframes or use cases to a developer to do. Uh, and then I think there's a lot too in the data migration and integration space. And we'll talk about some of the techniques for this, but as you're moving a new business unit or a new organization over to Salesforce, like what data from what systems do you need to bring over into Salesforce from their history? Because often you don't just start from a clean straight slate. And also as you're looking um, at your Salesforce implementation integrating with other systems in your organization, how do those, how does data pass back and forth between those systems? And that often feels like it's a very technical decision, um, but we need to understand from a business perspective what data we're bringing over and why, uh, and also how data is passing between those systems. Uh, Mike didn't mention, my husband's a Salesforce developer, and I get to see a lot of like the downs. He does a lot of these data migrations, right? And he'll be like at the 11th hour, like, oh, we didn't decide what to do, or nobody decided what to do with this part of the data, right? Because it was really a business decision that didn't get made. Yeah, one thing to well is that a lot of times for developers they're not so concerned with uh it's not their job to gather all that information you know yeah. and so as a business analyst you can be able to analyze like you're saying just on this slide here analyzing the configuration and customization requirements for salesforce and then also being aware of the different uh, integration points i want to take this opportunity to kind of interject because i saw a question come in live from deepa mm -hmm asking if a Salesforce admin certification is critical to get an opportunity in the ecosystem. I would say that it is, I would call it critical because you need to understand the foundations of the platform in order to do things like what Laura is speaking to on this slide specifically relate to especially the analyzing of the configuration and customization requirements and analyzing the data migrations and integrations. Those are things that I ran into all the time working on projects. And so you've got to understand the platform in order to document and know, and even analyze the impacts of the changes that you're going to make. Really all of these uh, uh, speak to that importance of that particular certification. Not because it's about receiving a certification, but it's because you want to understand the fundamentals of the platform. So I wanted to chime yeah. in with that and at least get one of these questions answered real quick. So. Awesome, I love <laughs> so, it. 
Yeah, so and just to kind of the one piece that I wanted to highlight on this slide that we haven't talked about yet is the gaining alignment, right? So all of this was more like analysis, which was kind of makes it sound like the BA just like figures out what all these things need to be, right? But it's really around discovery, analysis, and validation with your stakeholder community. So if you're moving a small team, it could be all the sales team people on that team. It could be all the customer service people and the marketing people, or it could be higher level stakeholders that are representing their teams or subject matter experts, but you're not doing this in a vacuum, right? So part of business analysis is the analysis, but a big, big part of it is communication, interaction, and collaboration with both business and technology stakeholders. Uh, and so this is just to highlight your point here about the key skills to be successful, right? It's both the business analysis skills. So how do you, how do you analyze functional requirements just from the configuration perspective? Like how do you know what the right level of detail is to analyze a configuration and know what, what that would be? And also the Salesforce expertise side, which is knowing what the potential is and the software that you've invested in. Uh, and I do agree that when you have that combination, it makes it much easier to be successful and a, really efficient in your analysis um, because you don't always have to go back to the developers. Like I've worked on a lot of systems where I really don't know a lot about the technical capabilities of the system. And one of the things I need to do early on is understand those capabilities, build really great relationships with the developers uh, and so that I can go and ask the like dumb questions of like what's possible here and how does this work and can you educate me about this so that I don't create requirements that like don't make any sense for that technical platform. Uh, it's a really important part of the role. So the more Salesforce knowledge you bring, that allows you to write requirements that are very um, feasible to implement within the Salesforce platform via a like, instead of like a pie in the sky, like, oh, we'd really love to have it do this. And it's like totally different than how Salesforce actually works. Then you're gonna have a lot of friction and resistance as you try to implement those requirements. So those two expertise together really, really um, serve you well. Is there anything else you wanna say on that one, Mike? Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I think a question in here related to that as far as um, what the difference is basically between a regular business analyst and a, a Salesforce business yeah. analyst. So. Oh, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there, I don't know that there is like a regular business analyst, right? But like right. there are, I'm, you know, I'm going to talk about the key skills next and then I think it would be sure. perfect to answer that question. Okay, yeah. great. So Mike's obviously the expert on all things Salesforce skill related. Uh, I just wanted to speak here a little bit more to the business analysis part of that equation. And this is a model that we use called our business analyst blueprint, which really maps out the key techniques that business analysts use on a typical software project. Uh, and so this kind of maybe would define some of the techniques that a quote unquote regular business analyst would be expected to know. Though really, they're real, these skills are applicable across all different industry domains, technology areas, different types of projects, whether you're in waterfall or agile, like the tech, these are the techniques that we use to discover analyze and define the software requirements or the requirements for a software project. And you'll see here, we start with that business level. So this is the business process. Like how does the business flow? Even when it's a software project, if we try to jump into the software without understanding the business process, that's when we often get into over analysis and requirements churn. And we think we're just trying to add a field to a page and all of a sudden, you know, people are having big disagreements about that or you add it and then it's not in the right reports that it needs to be because you actually didn't understand why you needed to add it and what the purpose of it was. So getting to that business level of what's the business process, this could be the process that your salespeople go through to book a sale. It could be um, to close a sale or to generate a report uh, to service the customer, whatever the key processes are that your business stakeholders are using the technology to do. And it might not all happen in the technology. Uh, and then there's the software level. So this is the piece that soft 
Salesforce and or other tools that are integrated with Salesforce are actually doing. Um, you know, we get to that functional level of what specifically, how is a person using the software, what actions are they taking in the software, and what is Salesforce, the software, doing in, in a response to those actions. So very specific step-by-step -step instructions of what that software needs to do, uh, which can be important more for areas where you're customizing or where you're you're doing a you're trying to fit a bunch of pieces together maybe in a new way and you need to step through that end-to-end -end process you wouldn't do it for like logging into the platform when it's an existing salesforce process but you would do it for a more complex aspect of the software um, and wireframes are a great visual way just to show what that might look like uh, and then the final level is the information level so this is the data that we were talking about before uh, some of the techniques here cover like understanding the current state of your existing data, as well as how data is organized in Salesforce and starting to map data between those systems so that you actually know like is that customer name field here really need to be mapped to the customer name here or is it account name right so that's probably a really common one like the difference between customer and account and really getting clear on what those mean what those terms mean uh, and how they're modeled in the data, what they're, how they're stored so that when you start to move data between the systems, you're actually moving the right data into the right places. Uh, and really important about this, I just wanna share that it's split between analysis and communication because of what I shared about um, how important it is to both be analyzing the requirements, like creating the output, but also communicating with stakeholders. We do none of this in a vacuum. Perfect. And so I, yeah, I guess to come back to that general question, like these would be the BA skills that would be relevant, whether you're in a Salesforce BA job or not. And then on top of this, you would layer whatever expertise is appropriate for that skill, that job. In, in the case of probably most of the people on this call, it would be Salesforce. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So you probably see in your world, you see, I think you mentioned some other tools other than Salesforce. I think um, you mentioned either Workday or ServiceNow. I think. ServiceNow is a big one these days. Yeah. yeah, we see like, I mean, the people, the examples that come across our desk are not always, they're not always like the big software, right? Like sometimes people are still in spreadsheets, <laughs> right? That when they're analyzing the processes or, or starting to update software. So it's really whatever software is in place in their organization. We see a lot of legacy systems, BAs working on systems that have been run for a long time, um, especially where they're just building a BA practice. Um, and a lot of the more, you know, cutting edge, bigger, more well-adopted tools um, in the, the SaaS space or the COT space. Gotcha. Yeah, I think people really get hung up on it being just Salesforce specific, but really just, I think to encourage people that are watching today, just look at Salesforce as a tool that's in your toolbox and yeah. you can add to that the uh, business analysis skills and that may take you down the path of working in the Salesforce ecosystem. That may actually take you down paths of working in other systems as well. And, and there's been many of my students that started off Salesforce, they ended up with some other on some other platform, but because they understood the principles of the platform and CRM, customer relationship management, those are transferable skills. Yeah. And so, uh, don't feel like or limit yourself to one tool, but really look at how you can branch out, whether that's uh, other tools as well or learning business analysis, so that you've got a robust skill set and you can do more, so that you're not a carpenter with just a hammer, basically. Right. Yeah, and I mean, Salesforce is a huge tool today, and it's there's a ton of opportunities within it, right? But like some of these other foundational skills do give you access to opportunities that you might not have otherwise. So a Salesforce expertise plus a business analysis skill set means that three to five years from now, from now, if the Salesforce piece isn't as relevant or in demand, right, you have that VA experience that you can draw from. Uh, to take you to the next skill, which could be whatever the next sales um, or enterprise ERP system is, right? Like, uh, because I, I do agree, like what we saw when before Salesforce became so in demand and there was more demand for it than there were qualified people 
is it was people with experience in other CRMs, other sales processes who understood how the sales process worked, right? That, that successfully transitioned into those roles too. Yeah. So you're building that more transferable experience as you start to do this work. Excellent. Yeah, I love it. Uh, let me look for some more questions here real yeah. quick before we go into the next piece of this. Um, and this may transition into kind of, um, you know, where things are heading. One question was around remote work. Do you see yeah. much remote work for, for uh, business analysts. I think this was Aaron asked this live, uh, looking for opportunities that are 100% remote. What are your feelings on that in a business analyst space? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, that tends is there are a, there are some of those opportunities, but what we see here is the stakeholder engagement piece is so important that often there is some requirement even for a remote business analyst to like be on site for an engagement meeting or some initial discovery to get to know the stakeholders because you're not doing this in a vacuum. There's a lot of customer in a, customer in a, interaction that's really important. Um, I do know, like actually one of our latest instructors is working 100% remote as a Salesforce business analyst. So actually now we <laughs> didn't ask how she landed the opportunity. It is contract, right? So it was more of a contract opportunity. So I think that's part of it. Um, when I talk about doing business analysis remote, I say, look for the companies that are 100% remote already, because then their business analysts will be remote to go to an, a company that has a really big office and ask to be a remote business an analyst is going to be a harder sell. But if they already have either a lot or are 100% remote themselves, then they're, they're going to have established ways to do business around that. Um, and also look for maybe companies that are in an area that you could commute to on occasion, like for a once a month check-in or, or things like that. So that, because those relationships are so important and they're harder to build quite honestly in an online environment, a remote environment. Gotcha. Yeah, they yeah. do exist, but they are smaller. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I found uh, the roles that require more uh, interaction with others and especially customer facing types of roles usually are the uh, like developer role is where you see a lot of uh, remote opportunity because those that are good coders like your husband Laura you just want them to code they're well paid and you don't want to distract them with a lot of uh, water cooler talk or meetings because their superpowers is slinging code and a lot of times uh, those opportunities are more remote. So there are there are some, like you mentioned, but from what my perspective in the Salesforce space, developer is the most remote friendly path, uh, but consultant, business analyst will have at least some uh, travel, some on-site, yeah. uh, but some possibility for remote. So. Yes. All right. So, and then we also received in the LinkedIn post that you did, like a ton of questions about like, how do I actually get into a Salesforce business analyst role, right? And uh, this is gonna be addressed in more detail in the, the free workshop that we're offering right now, which I know Mike has already put the link in the comments. We're gonna talk about it more in a bit, but just some ideas here specific to Salesforce. So we had somebody specifically in more of a QA, Salesforce QA role. Um, and so I actually came from QA, not in Salesforce, because it was like 20 years ago that I was a QA engineer. And part of the reason, way I made my shift into business analysis was really by creating a test process. So I was a QA, but I was a QA in a new area of testing. So there was no test process. So when I talked about analyzing a business process, that could be a business process that you do even in a software function. As long as it's like the manual steps you go through, how you engage maybe the business stakeholders. I engaged a lot of them in, in UAT. And so I was mapping out what that process needed to be. And I was learning, quite honestly, I was learning the, the specialties or the, um, the technical details of how our software system worked as well, which gave me that um, in-depth knowledge of the system and the, that, that created a lot of efficiencies in the requirements process, much like what we talked about 
with your experience with Salesforce. So you're going to understand how the Salesforce system works. And then the piece that you need to layer on is starting to build that business analyst experience and starting to kind of get ahead of the problem. So what are the, what are the, you know, when a big problem comes up or a big bug comes up, like, could you do a little requirements analysis or document a use case or talk to a user about how they use that in their business process so that you're testing more from that higher level and um, not necessarily just from, say, a test script or what the developer says the system should do, but kind of get closer to what the business is doing. From a developer side, often it is, you know, getting out and talking to business stakeholders. And if that's something you're like, I don't want to do that, then this is probably not a good role for you, right? But if you find like you'd rather spend more time talking to the business stakeholders about what you're creating and less time slinging clothes, like then this is a good path, like to just start kind of moving more and more into that business focused side of things. Uh, similar from a Salesforce admin perspective, like just look for what is a problem that you face day after day in your administrative work for that system and what would a, a small project or business process improvement look like to make that better and start to put that in place and start to use the BA techniques to put that in place, which will help you build up your experience. Uh, which then will qualify you for a broader range of business analyst roles. Uh, because one of the things, we haven't talked about this, but one of the, the challenges in business analysis is that most of the roles really do require often like the three to five years of experience, right? So often I get the question, like, how do you get the experience if you don't actually have, you know, the opportunity to get in the role if you don't have the experience? And it's like you start to build it in these other roles uh, and leverage that as transferable and speak to in interviews. And, and often if your organization doesn't have a business analyst, when you start to do these things, people will get really excited and often it creates a path. Uh, I've seen it happen again and again for our course participants. It could just like, you start to do a few things and all of a sudden everybody's so excited and they create a role for you to do more of that because it is so valuable for the organization. Yeah. Um, and then, Mike, you can probably speak better for somebody who's more the experienced business analyst. I'm not sure if we have many of them on our session today, but then it's more about learning the Salesforce expertise, right? Right, right yeah. yeah. And there may be some that fall in that category. And I did see someone ask a question. I was just trying to find it so I could say, hey, we just answered your question, or Laura did. Yeah. Someone was asking, how do you break in without experience, whether that's in the BA space or the Space. I'm just a question, and uh, I would just compound upon uh, what Laura mentioned is just trying to find, uh, and I always encourage people, I guess my own spiel on that, especially if you're new to both, is to make your own experience, and I've done some work around that, some boot camps around that, and that has to do with building a portfolio so that you have some stories to tell uh, in the interview room as far as things you've built on the platform, and uh, anything that you have take it upon yourself to try to build on a platform, you will naturally have some business analysis tasks that you have to do as far as gathering requirements or seeing what is the problem that you're trying to solve. And then you leverage whatever Salesforce experience you have. And that may just be a few weeks or a few months of uh, working on Trailhead or building some, uh, building out your own personal portfolio. But I always encourage people to find some way to build an app on platform and that way you have some tangible experience and that way you can answer those questions so yeah that's a good one i just saw something come in in the chat related to this which was how long does it take to make a shift from a sales role to a business analyst role and is that a common road for people to go down um you know i have definitely seen sales people become business analysts um and I often ask, like, do you like the quote part of your role as a sales, you know, in a sales job? So because business analysis is part communication, like the, the going out, building relationships, just, you know, talking to people on the phone, discovering what they want, like that's a very transferable skill from a sales background, kind of talking to customers, figuring out what they want, drilling into what problem that they want to have solved. Um, and then you got to go, go back and like, okay, what does the solution look like? And how detailed do you get about 
what that solution needs to look like and how much do you enjoy kind of putting that together in a form that you really know is going to meet their needs, in which case you can start to look at that as well as transferable VA experience. Um, so how long it takes, it really depends on the actions you take and the opportunities in your current environment and how quickly you act on those opportunities. There's no set answer to that. Um, but it's definitely a path I've seen people go down when they have that share where they like the detail orientation too. I know a lot of salespeople who have no desire to have any of that detail orientation. And so in that case, it's not a great fit. Um, but that, you know, that engagement piece can be very transferable along with now some more robust skills in the analysis area. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So to kind of piggyback off that, I noticed this in the chat as well. And just a reminder, if you have questions, does the QA say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and address this one. Elizabeth mentions how she has 10 years of BA experience and five years Salesforce admin experience, but it's taken a year break to relocate and get settled. So now the whole getting back in the game scenario. Yeah. And I know that you specialize, Laura, mid-career people that are wanting to pivot. So what, what would be the path for Elizabeth trying to get back in the game after a year uh, on the sidelines as far as this space goes? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think have a clear explanation for your break, but like you just got to go in and not, there's so much head trash. This is more mindset, right? Around, oh, I have this year long gap. It's going to affect my opportunities. I think we're seeing that people take breaks for all kinds of reasons. And so just have your reason and be able to speak to the experience you do have as if it happened yesterday and with currency and excitement. And like, if you're ready to go, just interview with that, with that kind of confidence and, you know, don't let that one year break kind of hold you back from a Salesforce perspective. There's a lot more that changes from a Salesforce perspective than a business analysis perspective. So you might want to refresh and kind of get up to speed on what's changed in Salesforce in the last year. Uh, but that's one thing I kind of love about business analysis skills. Like they're pretty timeless. Like your skills that you have from even 10 years ago, like there's nuances and things that have shifted a little bit in the profession, but like the way that you learn to think as a business analyst is kind of like the way you learn to ride a bike and it, it doesn't go away. It doesn't become irrelevant. Uh, and you know, there's tweaks that get put on it and things get called different names, but those go for it with that yeah awesome yeah I'm, I'm kind of jealous of the BA space because with Salesforce the software changes and there's updates three times a year with major releases so <laughs> I would say yeah I think that's really on point as far as just getting uh, refreshed on what's changed on the platform yeah. really and but then as well, even though a lot changes on the platform, the fundamentals remain the same. And I've been teaching online for four years now uh, in the Salesforce space specifically. And although the uh, UI or the user interface has changed a lot, the fundamentals have 90 to 95% remain unchanged. And I want to encourage those that get tripped up, especially watching some of my videos from 2016, 2017, and see that the screen is different, just understand that oftentimes, and I, I do update my course, I'm always, the battles that I'm always facing is how can I keep these more up to date, but just knowing that uh, the user interface is uh, window dressing, the fundamentals uh, remain pretty much the same, so, all right. Yeah, you know, there's one more piece I want to add on to that, because the caveat I have to that is if those 10 years were all in one company, and in kind of an informal way, right? Like informal meaning self-taught, never having an established BA practice. Um, that's where I can see, like then you start to interview and you think that all these skills are like skills you don't have, right? When really you do have them, you sort of need to like learn what the industry standard skills are, what they're called, really to kind of ground yourself in those industry standard techniques. And that's often what we help a lot with, with our course participants too. Is, and then you get to see how that 10 years of experience 
is really applicable in all kinds of industries, all different kinds of companies, right? Because you can get so locked into kind of your one way of doing things in a company that it can be a little bit either scary or um, you can kind of lack some confidence that it's relevant in a new organization. So we do see people go through programs for that reason as well. But if you've had experience in a couple different organizations and some training, then, you know, take the advice that I gave the first time. <laughs> Yeah, very good. So there were a couple of questions around, you know, what courses should I take to attain a VA skill set or yeah. um, is a certification or knowledge as a Salesforce admin sufficient for a VA Salesforce job? And I think that you need more than just like an admin certification to succeed as a Salesforce business analyst. So what, from your perspective, Laura, would you recommend for those that are wanting to land that first BA role and don't have skill set experience? What resources do you have a recommend for that? Yeah, well, that's a great segue into the online workshop. So we are running a free workshop now. Uh, that is all about making the transition into business analysis and that walks you through more of the opportunities available, how to break into a BA role. I go into depth with some examples and more in depth around that business analyst blueprint and the industry standard practices. Uh, and it, at the end of this workshop, we will be opening up registration to our business analyst blueprint training program, uh, which is a great next step. We've had a lot of BAs who are in established careers, so have you know, at least a few years, sometimes decades, but at least a few years of, of experience professionally, start to apply these skills right on the job uh, inside the program and transition into business analyst roles. And you'll hear some of their stories in the free online workshop and kind of be able to see like, is this a good fit for you? Is this an approach? But I agree with you, Mike, that there's training on Salesforce, which is the admin certification, right? And then there's training on business analysis. And you really, it's, it's business analysis is not a skill set that you just kind of like want to figure out as you go along. You want, if you, if it's new to you, uh, often people like get into their first business analyst role sometimes by luck and they feel like they're in a sink or swim situation because it, there is a, a lot to it. Uh, and having some, some standards and some techniques and support as you go through it can really help you succeed the first time versus kind of being in, in the sinkhole. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's great. So many golden nuggets there. And I think people may not even realize this. I've been in jobs where I felt eminently qualified and I've been in jobs where I felt like there's no reason I should have been hired. I'm in big trouble. And so having the uh the ability to have kind of a safety net and to know you don't know what your gaps are oftentimes you know you talk about in business analysis being able to do like gap analysis of here's what this software needs to do and here's what it's actually doing we kind of need a gap analysis in our own careers and skill sets and you know i've tried to do that and fill in those gaps in the salesforce space and i really see laura's specialty is in that business analyst space and you don't know what you don't know and uh, sometimes this can take years if you were just left to figure this out on your own and I look back to my own career before I discovered Salesforce I worked for 15 years as a technical writer and when I started out I was not very good and I remember my first job my boss just handed me the Microsoft style guide and said here read this and for a restaurant it was for their order entry system and I wrote my first user guide and this was in the mid 90s and uh, and actually technical writer is a path that because over those 15 years I got better at what I did and that's what enabled me to be able to learn Salesforce quickly and then put together training for others it was because of that experience if I had tried to uh, create these courses 15 years ago it would have been terrible and all over the place. And, uh, and so with that said, uh, I, I see that just having the ability to, uh, you know, leverage these skills is fundamental for so many different paths, whether that is for an administrator, QA, but it's, uh, it is, a, I guess, a path unto itself as far as it being a key role 
on these larger teams as well. And that kind of brings me to someone was asking about some of these other roles on these teams. And someone's talking about agile. I see a lot of overlapping questions. And so if you'd like, we could probably dive into questions and answers now. Yeah, for and sure. I know we had some that came in earlier, but I want to make that live so that people are like, when are you going to get to my question? But one was, uh, someone was asking about PM or PMI experience, like how important is that? And can you speak to uh, PMI or PM experience? Yeah, it's another place where, because the business analyst role isn't always well understood, um, often there is they're either project managers are doing business analysis or there's an acknowledgement that you are both a project manager and a business analyst on the project. So project management is more, and this isn't theoretical, perfect world terms, right? It's more uh, uh, both the, the scope that we talked about, like what's the scope of the project, who are the key stakeholders, but it's really more on managing the resources and the schedule and making sure the project gets done. Right, where business analysis is like, what, what problem are we solving? What are the details of what needs to get done so that it actually solves the business problem? And very often they're the same person doing those two things. And it can kind of feel a little bit like a push pull because a project manager always wants like more efficiency and like, let's get it done quicker and let's you know make sure we're on budget on time. And the business analyst often sees the opportunity and how much value they can add to the organization and has this natural tendency to kind of want to expand scope a bit to solve the real problem, right? So you'll find yourself kind of leaning towards one way or the other. Uh, and that's why a healthy project actually has two different people often in those roles so that there can be a really healthy tension between that, those two perspectives on a project. So the project manager can kind of keep the business analysis reined in and the BA can make sure that the project manager is getting the things on the schedule that actually add value. Um, and there are some brilliant people who can do both really, really well. Uh, so, you know, it's up to you which one pulls you and do the skills that I talked about here seem like things that you would like to do. You might do them in a Salesforce project and manager title. So I don't think we really talked about the titles all that much either, but that can add another layer of confusion is like, often the titles for a business analyst role aren't used consistently or for project managers. So you could have the Salesforce project manager title and actually be doing 80% business analysis on a given project. So look more at like what you're doing in terms of your role description than what the title is. Okay, and to kind of yeah. piggyback off of that, Krishna had a question about project manager and asking how the transformation is designed as part of these sessions. So I think what the question is, and I may be getting this wrong, but Krishna, I think is asking, uh, going from project manager to business analysts, mm -hmm. and I think in your sessions of your blueprint, I believe, do you have very many people that transition from project manager to business analysts, and how's that laid out? How's that path? Yeah, it is a really, it is somewhat of a common path. Um, historically, it wasn't because people would see project manager as like the next level beyond business analysis, um, but BA has grown over the last 10 years to where they're more seen pretty equitably in a lot of organizations, not all organizations. Um, and so we do see people transitioning one way or the other, depending on really what their, what their unique strengths are. Uh, and it's, it's the same path, right? So, and actually as a project manager, you often, you get to decide who does the requirements, right? Or you could assign yourself those tasks. So just start doing more of the business analysis on the projects you have and maybe looking for somebody to support you in a project coordinator role or to take over the project management completely so that you can focus more on the, the business analysis side of things um, and create the role that serves you that way. Okay, great. So John had a question about, he is Salesforce admin certified and he's wondering if attaining the CBAP would help him in getting a business analyst role in the Salesforce ecosystem? Yeah, so the CBAP is the CBAP, that's kind of insider how it is, the CBAP, <laughs> uh, which is Certified Business Analysis Professional, uh, and it is the, the highest level certification 
offered by IIBA, which is the International Institute of Business Analysis. Just for anybody listening in who's like, what are all these things, <laughs> right? It requires five years of documented work experience in business analysis to even apply, as well as 36 professional credits. Um, you can get the 36 professional credits through our blueprint program. And of course the work experience can be transferable. It doesn't have to be on the title. So assuming you meet those, I was just looking for the question, like assuming you meet those requirements, Kristen, Christian, and like it can be one of those extra edges to get you in um, to a business analyst role. But if it's like, you don't have that five years of experience, like don't like that can be really demotivating to people. Like they think they need the CBAP to get started. And then they realize they don't actually meet the the requirements to even apply for it. Um, and then they feel, again, stuck in that chicken or egg situation. And so really the solution is to start building the experience right where you're at in your Agile or in your Salesforce role and, and accumulate it from there, which will allow you to start meeting those requirements uh, for the CBAP as well. Uh, but if you are in between jobs and you can meet those requirements, it's an extra edge, but I wouldn't say it's like a showstopper from getting into your first BA role or next BA role. Awesome. So in the kind of going down the path of certifications related to business analysts as well, and this is one of my weaker areas as I'm not real familiar with those, but Pearl, I recognize Pearl's name because she uh, emailed me right before we went live saying, hey, should I go down the consultant path or business analyst path? I said, well, hey, I just so happen to, I'm getting ready to go live, so check it out. So here she is, and she's asking about the ECBA certification okay. from IIBA. I wonder if that would be helpful to learn the skills to be successful in collecting the right requirements for a Salesforce BA role. So that's from Pearl. Yep, yep, great question. So ECBA is also offered by IIBA. IIBA offers three core business analysis certifications. So ECBA is the entry level certificate in business analysis. The CCBA, I'm not gonna even guess what that stands for off the top of my head, but it's like a mid-level. It's equivalent to two and a half to three years of work experience. And then the CBAP that we just talked about is the five years. So those are all from IIBA, kind of one leads to the next. Um, the ECBA is nice because it doesn't have a work experience requirement. It's just passing an exam. Um, and you certainly could go down that route. Um, what I hear from people who kind of study to pass the exam, it's a little bit different than the Salesforce admin because I feel like the Salesforce admin is like really practical, right? Like you're learning to apply it in some ways. Whereas like the ECBA, like the, the IIBA ones, like you're learning to pass an exam that's like, how would you do this as a business analyst? And so often we find that people benefit from more of a skills focused, application focused training where they can start applying those skills on the job right away, even if they're not in a BA role, and then they get the credits that they need. And kind of once they have that experience, then they can apply for one of those exams. And it actually makes their exam prep a lot easier because um, like they have some, they have like something to hang the vocabulary on, right? Some experience to hang the vocabulary on uh, as opposed to just preparing to for the exam. So I think their question was actually specifically around like, will it make me better gathering requirements? Right? The right. Yeah. Yeah. And like a lot of the certification prep is very much geared, like look at whatever provider, but it's very much geared towards how do you pass the exam? It's not necessarily geared towards how do you build this skill and use it on your, on the, on the job uh, where our training is very much on the job training, skill-based right. training. Uh, that, that kind of training is so critical, and I've come to even appreciate that more as I've done live training. And yeah. I create these on-demand work to help pass certification. Everyone, not everyone, but a large majority just have tunnel vision on. I just want to pass the test. But it's in those uh, where we're getting into the weeds of, and I'm presenting something live, and thinking, okay, I don't know if this is going to work or not. And then I discover, okay, this didn't work as anticipated. But those sort of scenarios are so invaluable because then you get into the troubleshooting mode and that really tests mm -hmm. your knowledge of the platform. That's something that would be impossible to craft as a test question, but it's more real world hands-on experience, you know. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in that because then it doesn't matter how the questions are worded. If you know the fundamentals of business analysis, 
then you'll succeed on the job. It's not so much even a certification, it's succeeding, landing the job and then keeping the job, you know, and yeah. progressing from there. So yeah. um, we have a lot of questions. This is awesome. I told you, awesome. it was like, I think- you're Right, now it's kind of like starting to go, <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so we have uh, 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and lightning round some things. Yeah. And then whatever we don't get to, I'm going to take it upon myself to compile like a, um, a list of questions. I'm going to write out the answers and send that out via email to our participants here and those that catch it on replay. And so if we don't get your question answered live, we will follow up uh, after the fact. And if I have any questions for you, Laura, because I don't want to misspeak or anything, I may be pinging yeah. you afterwards. I know you're probably busy with your workshop and everything, but uh, let's see. Let's see how many we can. Yeah, and I'm actually answering a lot of questions in the workshop as well, uh, yeah. and there'll be an opportunity for some more live coaching in the workshop. So that's yeah. an also a great way if, if you wanted my specific perspective on something. So if this is something you'll cover in the workshop, just say workshop next. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a question though about uh, at, okay, how does the software development methodology like Agile or Scrum or Waterfall work with deploying Salesforce projects, and what is the role and responsibility in this these project implementations that's from Srini yeah and, and you just broke up a little bit so I'm just early. when I'm looking over here I'm looking at the chat just so everybody knows I'm not like gazing off in the space Are you uh, the yeah so yes I can so um so the BA role is always going to be around What's the problem, right? How are we solving that problem? What does the solution look like? And it does change when you're on Agile or Scrum or Waterfall, like it's a little bit different, but those core techniques that I, I spoke to are really relevant regardless of like if you're creating user stories or if you're in a more of a waterfall environment, um, you need to know how to analyze the requirements and think through what those requirements are and connect and collaborate with stakeholders. So kind of how the BA role works does shift a little bit, but those core techniques really are true kind of in a, in a, in a wide variety of situations. I'm trying to, trying to stay true to the lightning round too and not go off. I could, I could probably, we could talk about that one for the next eight minutes. All right, yeah, so I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. on this one, Mark asks, do companies look at business analyst and business analysis differently? Hmm. Um, I don't know that companies do. Uh, but like business analysis is often used as the more general term where business and like of the skills, the knowledge, the idea, the profession where business analyst is like the person in a job role. Uh, but, okay. but I don't know. Companies okay. probably aren't that most companies are not that <laughs> rigorous about their language. <laughs> so uh, I see Maria has a question about uh, three years of working as a software QA engineer. I know we had someone previously prior to live that mm -hmm. were going from Salesforce QA. Maria is going from software QA, not necessarily yeah. Salesforce QA. And so Maria has later worked for th three years as a solutions consultant. Uh, in both the roles, I've worked closely with the BA teams during the in-house product development, uh, which was a requirements management tool itself. Um, I'm just kind of, this is kind of a long question. <laughs> Eight-year gap, okay. As a stay-at-home mom, awesome, love it. And now I'm preparing for my Salesforce admin certification for a BA career is my approach in the right direction. So, come, so this is coming off the bench again, a longer gap, yeah. trying to add Salesforce any recommendations for Maria and also with that QA background as well. So I'm just trying right. to, I'm just trying to pick, right. So three years as QA and then three years as software solution consultant, which was mm -hmm. more training product expert pre-sales. So like, yeah. so again, like the gap is the gap, right? Like kind of just let go of the head trash around that, but folk that experience is what you want to bring forward and speak to now where you're at. So I do think for that, like to go to Salesforce and a BA, like, is it's a bit of a leap from where you were, right? So looking at QA roles, trainer roles, uh, roles that are more similar to the, the role that you were most recently in, perhaps with the Salesforce piece layered on top of it, could be a good first step. And then once you're in that role, you can start to build, like consciously expand your role into more of a business analysis role. 
Uh, it might just be, unless you can really do a good job identifying those transferable skills, uh, it, it might be a big leap to make uh, for your next opportunity, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be a career goal and you can work towards it. Okay, another question, this is one that was from the LinkedIn post that I wanna try and cover was, yeah. um, basically, do you have to have good technical knowledge to become a Salesforce business analyst? Um, I think just the business analyst piece, do technical people excel in this or can you be non-techy and excel as a business analyst? Yeah, I feel like it's about 50-50. So we have, as a profession, about half the people come from a more business subject matter expert. So in this space, that might be an, an admin or a salesperson or a marketing person, right? And then about a half the people come from more of a software developer QA background. So um, either background is fine. Uh, you don't have to have technical skills in terms of being able to write code or being able to query databases for the kinds of roles we've been talking about today. Some BA roles out in the market are more technical where they want you to know SQL and you're doing some fancy reporting and some Salesforce BA roles are probably more technical where you're actually doing some of the configurations of the tools, right? Because it's part implementer, part business analyst. Um, but there are roles out there that don't have that technical aspect to them. Um, what I think is important, which we spoke to, is like you need to know what the possibilities of the technology are. So you can't be like, I don't know anything about technology, right? And like you have to have that technical analytical mind and actually some of the techniques like the use cases and the wireframes techniques specifically in the data modeling help you like build your technical analytical mind so that you can understand technology even if you don't know how to code, which is really important for for being successful on a software project. Gotcha. Very good. So um, question around, uh, uh, there's, just, there's just so many questions around, will this background lend itself to that? There's a lot of transitionary mm -hmm. things. But there was one that came in earlier about, um, best practice for change management that's real specific to, I guess, scope creep, if you will. Can you speak to uh, projects that kind of go off the rails and yeah. how business analysts can help with that? Yeah, it, and it all, it all comes back, I feel like a bit of a broken record, but like what problem are you trying to solve, right? And why are you doing this project? So often when projects go off the rails, it's because we didn't do our diligence up front to understand, to get, maybe to, not even just to understand, but to understand and get alignment from, from a key stakeholder level, which could be pretty high up in the organization. Why are we doing this project? What does success look like? Um, and so if you're in a project that's starting to feel like it's going off the rails, often you've got to take a step back and look at what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And then start to use that information to really guide your decisioning. Um, and that does require some executive ownership over that as well. But we can really guide that as BAs and help elevate, here's the, what that lack of understanding around what the goal of the project is doing because our budget is getting squandered away with you know, somebody's pet requirements that just keep getting added to the sprint or something like that. So you can start to tell the story of the impact of not having that clear, clear okay. clarity. Okay. So a couple of questions came in around, you know, what are some training resources for Salesforce business analysts? I'm going to put it in yeah. the chat to all attendees, Trailhead's own um, page for business analysts specifically that goes into salary expectations. There's a link there for like six hours worth of what they call a trail mix that you can work through on Trailhead. And then I've got another question for you, Laura. This came in from Acacia. This was via email. I think she's going to watch the replay. She's probably like, where's my question? Uh, <laughs> all right. So she says, hi, Laura. I just read your book last week. Oh, by the way, Laura's written a book on business analyst work. And I'm about to send out BA resumes in the next day or two. As a business marketing consultant, I've used BA discovery, solution design, gap analysis, and elicitation techniques with all my clients. However, I rarely provide the formal documents since clients literally don't want that. <laughs> How can I represent my work using all the techniques mentally without misleading employers about producing the official written artifacts? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I would advise you, you to start doing is creating some of those artifacts, even if they're for yourself, right? Just because your clients don't want them, I think you will find the clarity in your thought process gets better as you create some of the documentation, um, at least a few times. But you will just want to speak to how you analyze the business process, right? Maybe you created workflow, you created something that you shared with them and talked through with them. Um, so be clear about what that was and be clear about the impact that you had when you did that. So, you know, I analyzed the process with three stakeholders from different departments and clarified ambiguities um, or, you know, mistaken assumptions that they were making. So be really clear about the outcome. Um, and unless they ask you to provide work samples, then just don't speak to the tangible outcomes of it. Just speak to what you did and what you accomplished. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So we are coming up. We're actually past the hour a little bit, but then I've tried to answer a few questions. Typing live. No is worries. I'm glad that we got to answer more questions. Yeah. Well, I so appreciate your time today. I think we've gained a lot of valuable insights. It's awesome. I will be following up with everyone that either attended live or via replay. I'm going to try and compile a list of questions and answers as well. And I do encourage those of you watching either live or replay to check out Laura's uh, workshop. I've shared that link a few times in the chat. And, um, and then um, We'll just kind of go from there, but I think a lot yeah. of your questions will be answered in that workshop. And it's several different sessions. It's free. It's invaluable for those of you. And I think over the span of that workshop, you'll be able to envision your own path and everyone's path is a little different. And so I think that that is a great resource. And then be sure and check out the other resources that I shared. It should be at the very top of the chat at the start whenever we started things out. And, um, and so we, uh, we so appreciate your time, Laura. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank to you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It was a great session. <laughs> All right. We'll see everyone. Right. Later. Bye. Right. Bye.